this tutorial, we'll talk about aliasing, which happens during audio signal processing, what provokes it, and what we can do to get rid of it if we need to. I will bypass all formulas and make my explanations as simple as possible. All man-made systems have their limits. The aliasing happens when a device processes data, which goes beyond the device's restrictions. In digital audio, it means a signal has a wider spectral content than a digital audio workstation can work with. To avoid it, extra frequency components must be removed before getting into the computer, and this is one of your audio interface's functions. Besides, the audio processing itself can produce extra harmonics as a result of the signal's changes it performs. And first of all, we are talking about an amplitude modulation. Compressors, limiters, saturators, ring modulators, etc. Everything that alters the signal's amplitude may cause some extra special data. I will demonstrate it with M oscillator, followed by M limiter and M analyzer. First, let's have a quick tour of the settings. M oscillator. Here I mainly use default settings. The output signal is a sine wave. As a start point, I'm going to use a frequency corresponding to C6 note, M limiter. I will use clip 3 mode as it creates the largest number of new harmonics. I set input gain plus 6 decibels to force even more harmonics, and I turn the output gain down to minus 6 decibels to compensate the output signal level boost I don't need, even harmonics. I set them at 0, and I will start the dry wet dual set at 0%. M Analyzer. Here I just turn off some features I won't need to keep an interface as clean as possible. All we can see here is a signal pole representing the sine wave coming out of M Oscillator. Now, if I turn M Limiter's dry wet controller to the right, we'll see the spectrum of the signal at the M Limiter's output, and that is what we're interested in. Let me zoom in here. What we are looking at is a row of the sine wave's harmonics as a result of M limiters processing. This is a fundamental, and all those are harmonics. However, if we look carefully, we'll notice one more row, which is going down not from the fundamental frequency, but from the right edge of the window. This is aliasing. What happens is M limiter has transformed the incoming sine wave into the new signal whose total frequency response stretches much further than the highest frequency my digital audio workstation can accept. However, that extra content cannot simply disappear. DAW folds the extra content back into the frequency range then DAW can work in. If I shift the original signal's frequency up, that frequency in consecutive harmonics will move to the right. However, at the same time, we can see the second row moving in the opposite direction. I'll move the frequency forward and back again, and you pay attention not to the original signal, but to what aliasing is adding to it. It sounds as if I'm tuning AM radio. As you can hear, this addition has nothing in common with the original audio. And the reason is those extra frequencies are not harmonics of the original signal anymore. We are dealing with a single sine wave right now. Imagine the chaos aliasing can add to a complex signal, to your mix, for example. Sure, it won't manifest itself as loud as music. However, you will get an impression of an unpleasant sound. So if you want to keep our audio clean, we need to get rid of those absolutely unnecessary components somehow. And upsampling, sometimes called oversampling, is a good solution for it. Again, I will bypass all theory behind it and just mention that when we use oversampling in a plugin, we only increase a sampling frequency the plugin works at, not the sampling frequency of the whole digital audio workstation. Thus, we extend the frequency range the plugin can work in. Now, the plugin can use this additional range to filter out the extra components of the spectrum, which makes no difference for us. This is what scientists say anyway. See what happens when I multiply M limiter sampling frequency by 2. Aliasing is gone. It hasn't gone totally yet. If I lower resolution in M Analyzer, we can still see it. However, the level of it is considerably lower. Let's select up sampling 3. Aliasing is even lower now. If you want to get rid of it completely, try settings 4 or 5. Going higher than 5 doesn't make much sense, as it won't make any difference, but consume lots of CPU power. As I already mentioned, up sampling algorithm involves filtering. Some filters introduce a delay, or so-called latency the time needed for a filter to process data. There are cases when latency can be an issue. For example, if you work a live show, 
Fortunately, Moda Production allows you to select the algorithm's type depending on your situation. Open the plugin's interface. Click on the Settings button. Select Settings at the very top of a pop-up window. Under General Settings, you will find High Quality Upsampling option. When it's on, Upsampling introduces some latency. If it's off, then there is no delay. As the name suggests, High Quality Mode gives a better result. This example raises a logical question. Should we use Upsampling at every stage of audio processing? And the answer is, not always. You see, if you apply a distortion effect or heavy limiting, something which produces a high level of distortions, then yes, you should use upsampling. However, if it's a gentle compression or equalization, perhaps you don't have to, as you will hardly hear a difference, if any. That's all for now. See you next time.